Now that you know a little something about gears, we're going to look at how you can calculate the drive ratios of those gear trains or those gear mechanisms. Before we begin, some variables that you need to know. N stands for the number of teeth, okay, that's the teeth that are interlocking together. D stands for the diameter, so it's end to end of the gear, just as if it were a wheel. This symbol right here is known as the Greek letter omega, and that stands for your angular velocity or your speed. This letter T is actually the Greek letter tau, and it stands for torque, or basically how much rotational effort you need in the system. To differentiate between our driver gear and our driven gear, we use the subscripts in and out just to distinguish between them. Okay, so if we look at these red and blue gears moving together, let's make the red gear our driver. So we can count how many teeth it has, we can measure its diameter, and we can also time how many rotations it does per minute. The torque or the effort, that's how much, again, foot pounds of force it can do in one of its turns. Comparing these two gears together, my output gear has 12 teeth, it's got a 4 inch diameter, and because it's a larger gear, it's going to have a slower RPM value. Notice the relationship. Twice the size resulted in half the speed, but twice the size resulted in twice the amount of torque. Using this information, we can figure out a gear ratio. Gear ratio is nothing more than just the mechanical advantage of that gear system. And it can be found several different ways. All of these equations are just ratios of the different variables involved with gears. So if you know your number of teeth, you can find your gear ratio by just finding the number of teeth out over the number of teeth in. You can also find your gear ratio if you know the diameters or if you know the speeds, or if you know the torque. Because of these ratios, you can actually set any two parts of the equation equal to each other. So if you know, know your number of teeth and you know your diameters, you can solve for a missing variable just by setting up a simple proportion. Okay, based on this gear setup, we can solve our gear ratio in a couple different ways. So our gear ratio for this example, if we wanted to do our number of teeth, the blue gear has 12 teeth, the red gear has 6 teeth, so we would have a gear ratio of 2. I could also use my diameters. So if I use my diameters, it's the out gear's diameter over the input gear's diameter. Notice how I'm still getting a gear ratio of 2. If I wanted to use my speeds, my gear ratio is now my speed in, or the speed from the driven gear, driver gear, excuse me, to the speed of your driven gear. I'm still getting a ratio of two. So it doesn't matter which set of numbers I use, I'm still gonna get the exact same ratio of a two to one ratio from this simple gear train. Let's put some more gears together. Okay, so here I've got four gears in a gear train, and I want to know the gear ratio between gear A and gear B. Notice what they're giving me is the number of teeth for each gear. So if I want to find the gear ratio between gear A and gear B, I'm going to take my input gear divided by my output gear, and I'm going to get a 0.6 gear ratio. I want to find the gear ratio between gear B and gear C. I'm going to do the same thing since I know the number of teeth. My gear ratio is my number of teeth out over my number of teeth in. In this case, it's five teeth on my output gear, 12 teeth on my input gear, where I get a 0.42 gear ratio. Notice how my gear ratios are less than one because each time I'm going from a big gear to a small gear, from a bigger gear to a small gear. So your Gear ratios are going to be less than 1. If I find the gear ratio between gear C and gear D, same thing, I'm going to use my number of teeth out over my number of teeth in, so 20 over 5 gives me a gear ratio of 4. Finally, I get a gear ratio greater than 1, again, because I'm going from a small gear to a large gear.
but what is the total gear ratio for this entire system? To find the total gear ratio for the entire system, you simply multiply each individual gear ratio to each other. The 0.6 came from us mating gear A and B together. The 0.42 came from us mating gear B and C together. The gear ratio of 4 came from mating C and D together. So what I do is just multiply all those together, and this actually comes out to be a gear ratio of 1 to 1. Well, what do I get if I mate gear A and D directly to each other? Since the number of teeth are given, I'm going to use my number of teeth out over, over my number of teeth in. Notice how I get 20 over 20, which is the same thing as I get if I multiply all of those gear ratios together. Moral of the story is, if you have a gear train, a simple gear train, you can simply compare the input gear to the output gear, and you'll get the exact same ratio than if you were to multiply them out. But what would be the total gear ratio if the last gear had 40 teeth? We could still calculate each individual gear ratio. Notice what's changed now, though, is my last set, my C to D, would have an 8 to 1 ratio, giving my overall gear train a 2 to 1 ratio. That's going to be the same thing as if I simply compare my number of teeth out to my number of teeth in, or in other words, gear D to gear A, I'm still going to get that 2 to 1 ratio. Okay, let's take a look at the compound gear train. A compound gear train, remember, is just simply gears that are stacked on top of each other and mated a little bit differently. Okay, so the green gear is my driver gear. It's mated to the yellow. The blue is just simply stacked on top and it's driving the red gear. It's important to kind of note that the two middle gears, because they share a common axle, are going to rotate at the same speed. This allows the final the final gear to rotate slower and produce more torque than if it were connected only to the driver gear. To find your gear ratio, you're going to look at the gears that are mated to each other. So I want to start out and find the gear ratio between gear A and gear B. Again, because the number of teeth were given, I'm going to take my teeth output over my teeth in. So we get a gear ratio of 2 to 1 between gear A and gear B. Next, I'm going to look at the gear ratio between gear C and gear D. Same thing, my gear ratio is my number of teeth out over my number of teeth in, and that comes out to be two and a quarter. To get the gear ratio of the entire gear train, I'm simply going to multiply my two individual gear ratios together. So this entire gear train would have a gear ratio of 4.5. Notice how I can no longer just take my output divided by my input. I'm not going to get the same answer. So with a compound gear ratio, you do have to do a little bit more work and look at which gears are actually mating to each other. If you have any questions over gear ratios and how to calculate them, please make sure you ask me in class.